Hello, welcome to E-Day at the University of Kentucky. My name is Chloe DiGiorgio, and I'm a sophomore with a focus in biology. This may sound odd at first, considering I'm doing a presentation for the College of Engineering, but it makes perfect sense for the field of bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is an interdisciplinary field that uses computer science to analyze biological data. The capacity to generate data is increasing to a point where computers are necessary to process all of the information. I did a project over the summer where we studied the genomes of various Magnoporthorhizae strains. It was a great research opportunity because it introduced me into the world of computer science while still reinforcing biological concepts. I learned how to use various command line tools and picked up programming skills as well. Magnoporthorhizae is a pathogenic fungus that causes rice blast disease in rice plants. The ends of its chromosomes contain repetitive regions that are highly unstable, and this instability may contribute to an adaptive mechanism. In order to study this phenomenon, high-quality chromosome-level assemblies are required. However, repeats in the genome, especially in these subterminal regions, cause complications for assembly programs. Current approaches to genome assembly involve fragmenting the genome, sequencing those fragments, and then reassembling the genome. Unique portions of the genome are not an issue, but you can see how repetitive regions may cause confusion when piecing things back together. My partner and I were given two partially assembled genomes with the goal of refining them down to chromosome level assemblies, meaning that a whole chromosome was encompassed on one fragment, or what is known as a contig. I was given strain D11, and my partner was given U233. Magnoporthorhizae has 14 chromosomes, so we wanted to reduce our contig numbers down to 14. To achieve this, we had many bioinformatics tools available to us. We used RStudio and a software called Mumplot to compare our genomes to an assembled genome of another strain. You can see part of a graph that is comparing D11 and strain LPKY97-1A. These graphs gave us insight on potential connections, translocations, and misassemblies. We also mapped the raw data to the final assembly. Finally, any regions with potential findings were examined more closely using the command line tool BLAST. Here's an overview of how we found potential contig connections. The mumplot on the left shows all of the contigs that correspond to chromosome 6 of the reference genome. To investigate these possible connections, we looked at the raw reads that comprise the ends of the contigs. We looked for raw reads that were soft clipped to try to match the clipped end to the end of the adjacent contig in the mumplot graph. These are our results, and while we were unable to generate chromosome level assemblies, we still reduced the number of contigs in our genomes. You may notice that the number of connections does not match the reduction of contigs. This is because during our refinement process, we had many interesting findings. The programs used to generate assemblies can make mistakes, and this leads to misassemblies. Misassemblies were identified by examining raw read coverage in the Integrative Genomics Viewer. This is a picture of raw reads aligned to a contig in IGV. All of the boxes represent a raw read that corresponds to a region of the contig. The gray boxes are primary alignments, while the white boxes are secondary alignments. A location on the contig where all reads were clipped off at the same position indicated a potential misassembly. Another indication of a misassembly was a region of the contig where the majority of the coverage was from secondary alignments. Misassemblies were resolved by extracting raw reads in the region with long soft clipped ends and using them as queries in a blast search against the genome to identify any matches on other contigs. During this process, we found an interesting sequence and searched that sequence in the NCBI database. We found that it matched to the E. coli genome, and upon further inspection, we found multiple contigs that were contaminated with E. coli. Translocations often occur due to retrotransposons. On the mumplot graphs, this looks like one contig split between two chromosomes. These regions were then ins inspected in IGV for misassemblies, and if none were found, this indicated a possible translocation. To confirm a translocation, the region had to have at least two raw reads with unique sequences anchoring them on either side. Finally, for some more biological information, the translocation region was blasted to see if the sequence corresponded to any transposable element sequences. Contigs containing telomeres were identified so that telomeric and subterminal regions of the genomes could be analyzed without needing a complete genome assembly. 
11 of the GI11 telomeres were captured in the assembly genome, and the remaining three were found by examining raw read sequences. The GI11 subterminal regions were compared to those of its progeny strain 70-15, using the characteristics of 70-15 reported in a paper by Ray Meyer et al. Ten of the GI11 telomeres shared the same unique features, such as repeat patterns, rDNA, and the TLH gene, as the 70-15 telomeres, which demonstrates the similarity between the two strains. Previous southern blots comparing telomeres of GI11 and 70-15 showed that the strains have three unique telomeres. More research can be done to investigate whether the 14th telomere is also common between GI11 and 70-15, or if it's another divergence. This is another great example of how computer science can provide biological insight. The main goal of our project was to improve two Magnaporthorhizae genomes by connecting contigs and resolving misassemblies. We found our strategy for improvement to be tedious and time-consuming and hope to refine it so that genomes can be improved in a timelier fashion. During the process, we uncovered interesting information about the genomes that we studied. While examining the subterminal regions of GI11, we found a telomere-linked helicase gene at an internal region of a GI11 contig. Further investigation can be done to see if this is an internalization event or a misassembly in this region of the contig. E. coli contamination was originally found in a GI11 contig, and the contamination sequence was blasted against the rest of the contigs to search for any additional contamination. We found that it was present in both GI11 and U233 and removed the contamination sequences from the genomes. We also identified retrotransposons associated with translocations in U233. Finally, using the mum plot and blast searches, we found that U233 may have a unique inserted contig. Refined genomes can be studied for structural divergences between strains such as translocations and the causes of these events. The subterminal regions can also be studied for overrepresented genes that may be involved in the instability of the region. Finally, these refined genomes can be used for reference-based assembly of other genomes. As you can see, this work could not be done without computer-based bioinformatics tools. Bioinformatics is a great intersection of computer science and biology. My project utilized multiple computer programs to analyze biological data, but there are so many other opportunities, including writing your own bioinformatics program. I would like to thank the University of Kentucky and my mentors, Dr. Farman and Dr. Yaramchik, for the opportunity to participate in this REU. Research experiences for undergraduates are great ways to build relationships with research mentors, collaborate with other students, and learn new skills. I definitely recommend participating in an REU if you get the chance.